Hello, welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing some drawings with graphite. So get out your pencils, your cotton swab, kneaded eraser, anything that you think you need to draw with. Have it right handy. And let's draw together. Remember, art makes life better. It's heartwarming to have people to draw with. So thank you, I appreciate you being here. And um, here we go, we're gonna draw this big old bison. So, simple shapes. Let's start out, look at his body. It's kind of like this big candy corn. And you can say, well, I want his backside to be right to the very end. So you can make this little mark and just say, oh, that's where it's gonna go. And maybe I want his head to be over here. So now all of a sudden you have this size relationship and you go, oh, okay, I see where he's supposed to be. This whole visualization thing. His head is like this big light bulb. You can say, well, that's, that's where his head is. It's right there. And yes, it's probably not the right shape. Uh, it might be bigger or smaller or whatever, but it's a point of reference. So you, you throw that in, you say, okay, that's where that is. His body's like this big, um, what, candy corn? So it's kind of narrow there and a little wider out here. There's his little candy corn body. And the apex of his candy corn up here is about where his leg is down there. And so you can come straight down from there and say, okay, that's about where his leg goes. There's a leg right there. And it's this kind of uh, funnel looking kind of shape. And yes, that's not perfect. We, we understand that. But it's a point of reference. You need that point of reference before you can start getting all those details in. So many times we think, well, we got to draw a line around everything and, and it has to be just right and perfect. No, it doesn't. You need that point of reference. So you just kind of throw those in like that. Now again, that may not be perfect. That's okay. We can adjust it. I'm looking at that the little hump part thinking, well, mine's a little short. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up just a little bit. And it kind of comes down in here. Drawing is kind of like a camera. You start out and it's all a fuzzy, all you see is simple shapes. And then the more you focus, the more detail you get in there. And so, uh, he's got this little beard that's gonna come out here. Then you'd say, oh, okay, uh, maybe he's got a little bit of that hair that's kind of coming off of there. Just gonna throw that in. Look how easy this is. I, I know it feels weird to you, but it, it won't. After a while, it's going to feel just fine. We're not worried about horns or eyes or nostrils or anything yet, but we will. We'll be there. It, it'll, it'll happen. And remember, everything here is on the surface. Now, you start analyzing it. Is that big enough? Is it too big? Is it too small? Before you erase what is wrong, draw the right. So for me, I'm looking at this thinking, okay, I need it a little bit lower there. This needs to go a little higher here. So I'm going to draw it right first, then I'm going to erase what's wrong. If you erase what's wrong before you draw what's right, you lose your point of reference and all of a sudden you'll do it wrong again. And so do what's right first and then erase what's wrong. I don't know, there's got to be a life lesson there somewhere. And so now I'm just going through and I'm looking at little areas that I think, okay, now I need to adjust it here. This all happens very, very quickly. And if it's not happening as quickly for you as it is for me, that just tells you I've had more experience. Which is probably very true because I've been drawing 600 years. or, you know, 500 maybe, give or take a year. I'm just adjusting and adjusting until I'm happy with what I get. Now I have to say, okay, where is that eye located? See that little bitty, beady eye? If I were to take this and measure from top to bottom, that eye is about right smack dab in the middle. 
give or take a little bit. I mean, it's maybe not perfectly right in the middle, but I can measure. I can use my fingers like calipers um, or my, my pencil, you know. I can kind of figure out where the middle is. Usually what I'll do is I'll put my pencil right in there and go, okay, where is that eye? Go up and down until it's about right. And then I visually track that and say, okay, it's about right in there, and that's where I'm going to put it. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to make a little mark there. It's just a, a guide. Now, it, I could put in that horn too, and I could put in the nostril, and then I start comparing them parts to parts. You know, that proportioning things, starting to compare. That nostril is a little further away from the eye than the horn is. And so I can come up to the horn and go, well, just not too far above the eye is where the horn starts, about right in there. And maybe it's just a little bit out from there, so about right in there. Again, I'm just going to make a little mark, do a little, little line. And I'll just throw that in there. And it, it may not be exactly right. That's okay. It's my point of reference. Now, then I analyze it. Is it close to where I want it? Do I need to change it? What about that nostril? If that's the eye right there, that nostril is about on the other end of between the horn, the eye, and the nostril. It's about right in there. That means I need to move this over just a little bit. So now I'm starting to really look at all those proportions and analyze things a little bit deeper. That needs to go a little bit over there. That nostril now is over here. Is that now in the right place? If it isn't, again, I have to adjust it. Maybe that eye isn't in the right place. Maybe I need to move the eye. But I've got my point of reference now. And hopefully it's starting to work out. Because we're on the side of our pencil like this, those lines are never going to be permanent until we want them to be, and then we'll, we'll grind them in. One thing that you can do, too, that helps you with your proportions is to get the darks and lights in. So you look at that, you can even squint your eyes a little bit and just say, okay, where do I see those dark shapes? And one thing about drawing is you've got to stop thinking of it as a thing. You're not drawing a thing, you're drawing shapes of dark and light. And when we're all done, those shapes are going to combine and look kind of like a buffalo. Or a big bear with horns or something. But hopefully it's going to be pleasing to you, whatever it is. You guys know what incidental learning is? You ever hear of that, incidental learning? Have you ever heard of that? So incidental learning is when you learn about things as you're learning other things. And it just kind of happens. Incidental learning just, just happens. I'm really big on incidental learning. So I, I do things like I'll tell you stories. Uh, we'll talk about buffalo. And we'll learn a little bit about buffalo. And even though you're, you're just drawing a buffalo, I mean, what do you know about a buffalo? I have a confession to make. I didn't know very much about buffalo. I knew that they were endangered, that at one point in America they were almost extinct. In Europe they were extinct hundreds of years ago because mankind hunted them to death. But in America, I mean, you know, what do you know about buffalo? They are aggressive. They are very territorial. Especially when they're rutting, when they're in the mating season. Oh my goodness, you don't want to get in their way. And they're huge. So as we're drawing, I want to tell you a little story. This is maybe some incidental learning. Last year, so I, I belong to a mountain man group, and, and this is fairly new for me, about three years I've been in there. Uh, before that I was in medieval and, and uh, colonial and things like that. So, you know, mountain men do a lot of hunting and buffalo and things like that. And anyway, so I uh, went up to a, a rendezvous up in Cache Valley 
And there is a, a herd of buffalo in Cache Valley around the, the American West Heritage Center. And we were at that center. My wife would watch these tours go out into the buffalo. They, they have a little, little trailer and a, a little wagon and they take people out there and she watches them go out and, and the guide is, is talking to people and then they come back in, everybody's all happy and yeah, we saw a buffalo. So my wife says to the, the guide one day, we're sitting around the campfire and the guide comes in and her name's Katie. And she says, Katie, I, I gotta know, what do you tell people when you're going out to the buffalo herd? And she says, oh, I'll take you out there. So she took us on this private tour out to the buffalo. We're in this little cart and we go out into the middle of the herd and these buffalo are all around us. They're nuzzling our arms. I mean, they're sniffing us and everything. And it's like, oh, I don't want to move because these things were huge. Um, six feet at the shoulder or more. Uh, they're just huge. Katie said she watched a buffalo jump from a standing position on top of a two bales of hay. And these bales of hay are four feet wide. So two of them make them eight feet tall. She watched a buffalo jump on top of a, two bales of hay that were eight feet tall. A buffalo can jump eight feet from standing position. And I was amazed because these things are huge. They're massive. She says they'll run 40 miles an hour. And so if you're trying to run and get away from them, uh-uh, you ain't going to do it. And they're just, but they're so noble. And they, they're very protective. Um, they're very loyal to one another. Just, it, it's an amazing creature. Amazing creatures. So here with this, I'm just kind of shading in with the side of my pencil. This is never as dark as I need it. But eventually, eventually it will be, because we're going to add to it. Anyway, I was so grateful that she did that. And I, I learned so much and got a greater appreciation for these big beasts that were almost extinct. What a loss. I also found out that a lot of buffalo are not your buffalo. There's cow in a lot of them. So there's a couple of herds in the United States that are pure and it's illegal to breed them with any other kind of buffalo. They've got to stay pure. But yet the gene pool, you know what happens to genes when they're they're not pure, you know, they degradate and then sometimes if you have a short gene pool then they they kind of get birth defects and things. Anyway, so she was telling me that, that all their buffalo that are born in their herd have to go somewhere else so that they have a, a better gene pool. And that the two herds in Utah that are pure, there's one in the Henry Mountains and there's one in, um, I think it's Antelope Island, are the pure herds. Everybody else is part cow. that was interesting so there's a lot of that texture and stuff that we're really not thinking about right now we're just thinking about lightness and darkness and the values that are there and you're probably wondering to yourself well mr low when do we get to use that cotton swab so these little cotton swabs you notice that mine has a little darkness on it already that's because i've been using it all day um it's good to have these that are used because if I wanted to draw some prairie grass, I could come into this. I, I haven't even touched it on this drawing, but I can come in and, and start doing little prairie grass with this immediately. Here's some prairie grass. And it's just light and soft. Of course, our little buffalo here is in snow. And you can see some of his breath kind of coming around here. I can show you how to do that with your cotton swab as well. But I'm just going to take my cotton swab and just start blending some of this. It smooths it out. If you want your drawings to be smooth, you kind of start out this way and any layer on top of it is easier to smooth out when it's like this. And so I'm just kind of blend some of that stuff. You can move it out. You can kind of like painting. You can take this dry stuff 
and move it around. You can slide it down over here. Now that horn isn't isn't white. So I'm going to just go into it and can do those edges. We can sharpen those edges here in a bit. I'm just going to blend that together. And as you do, you're picking up that graphite. That's what your pencil is made out of, graphite. So I'm just using this, I'm just kind of going through a little bit. You're going to end up with this kind of ghosty image, this very light, soft image of your buffalo. And at this point, everything is still on the surface. If there's something you don't like, it's easily erased. You can get rid of it. So you start analyzing it, going, is it, is it soft enough, is it hard enough, is it big enough? You know, start analyzing it. Because this is easily erased. But unfortunately, you know that line I put in there? It's still there. And the more I draw on it, the more you'll see it. So another reason we don't use the tip of our pencil when we're when you're starting out to draw. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And I wish somebody had shown this to me when I was in high school. Because I think I would have been a much better artist. If you like this kind of uh, soft, fuzzy kind of uh, way of drawing, you can take a piece of tracing paper and you can scribble on it. You can take your graphite just scribble on it like this. And then you can pick up that graphite with your your cotton swab, and it's, it's kind of like painting. This is like paint, and then you can come over and immediately start doing stuff. I mean, I can I can go on the back here and I can do this, or I can um, I can start doing some darker. Look how dark that went. That's just all that graphite I picked up off of there. If you like it really soft and smooth like that, that's a fast, easy way to apply your graphite. And see how dark that went? Or you can just say, well, you know what? I'm going to just apply that graphite directly to my drawing. So I can come in and I can say, okay, am I happy with it where everything is? Look how soft your edges are too, by the way. You don't want to draw a line around things. Some of that fur over his back is so soft, it's so light, that it, it might even disappear a little bit. And you want to leave that edge soft and fuzzy like that, okay? So we're not going to draw a line around that at all. We're just going to allow our edges to take care of themselves. There's no, no line around anything here. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm, I'm just going to take my pencil now and if I'm happy with everything the way it is, um, I'm going to go into drawing mode here, into detail mode. And I'm just going to do start with the eye and kind of work out from there. The head is our emphasis area. That's, that's the part people really look at. You know, after a while, you can maybe look at the hooks and, and things like that. But the head, that's, that's really your emphasis area. So I'm going to start with the eye. And... I'm not going to draw a line around everything. I'm going to do just like we did to start with. I'm going to start with simple shapes. I started with um, the, the little corner of the eye. It's kind of dark. But you see that corner of the eye that's kind of dark there. This little edge that's dark under there. You see that little highlight that's there. And then his eyelid has some light across that. And that's kind of what I, I want to be looking at. I'm just looking at those shapes of dark and light. So there's that, here's the area around his eye, area under his eye, you can even see the little folds in his skin. 
there is a little highlight there. And so what I'm going to do is just very lightly shade in that eye. I'm going to leave that spot of light out. There's a little dark edge across the top. And instead of doing a line, I'm actually doing a little you know, zigzaggy kind of shape. I'm not drawing lines, I'm drawing shapes of darkness. And if they're thin, you just kind of put your pencil on it and kind of do a little shake. Because all that's going to get blended. I'm going to blend all that. This line is called a feathered line, where you kind of drop it in, you do a little flip like this, flip, 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 flip. What it does is it will create a darker edge on the bottom and a lighter edge towards the top, and it'll look like hair, because that's what hair does. And it, it's useful for all sorts of things. Feathers, hair, people hair as well. So I'm just kind of going around looking at that dark area there's some feathered line, and that feathered line, when you blend it, is just going to look like fur. And you can skip areas. Don't don't be afraid to say, "Well, I I see it's lighter there." When in doubt, leave it out. If it looks lighter and you're not sure you should draw it there, don't. You can always come back in and add it later on. So I'm just kind of zigzagging, scribbling around things. So that what's going to happen is when I take my cotton swab in there, I can just sit there and blend it like this. So you see what happens there? See how soft that gets? And where it was really dark, it's going to stay there, but it's going to blend that around. And if you think, oh man, I just can't control that cotton swab very well, and I'm going to purposely do this. And all of a sudden I got rid of all those light areas that I was supposed to have. Take your kneaded eraser, pinch it down to a little tiny point like this, and then touch that little dot of light. Ta -da! And it'll bring it right back out. Even the little light across his eye, just going to touch that, bring it right back out. If you, if you see stuff that you think, oh, I shouldn't have gone that dark or I blended it too much, but you don't want to rub it out, you can just take your, your kneaded eraser and touch it. You just go in and you just go, I'm going to touch it. You just kind of dab it like this and it will suck up that graphite, lighten it up quite a bit. But you have to, you can see it on my, my kneaded eraser there. When you clean it, you just pull it apart, clean it. That's really it. You just kind of got to look at it and go, okay, where are my darks and lights? Draw in those shapes of dark and light. Use your kneaded eraser or your pencil or your cotton swab or whatever it takes. And just make it that same texture, that same surface. And voila, you'll have it. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out of him now that you got the eye done. Zoom out and just continue doing that. Uh, just layering in your darkness, smooth it out, and you might look at it and go, oh, you know what? It's still even darker. And you may want to just flip up to that mode where you're grinding it into the surface. Okay, that's kind of hard to see because there's reflected light all over it. But you can see how dark it goes when I get rid of that reflected light. And for his fur, try that, that um, feathered line, especially on the very end, like right up in here. You just kind of do a little flip, 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 flip. 
And then when you soften your edges with your cotton swab, it'll be soft and fuzzy. So I'm gonna zoom out and just I'm just gonna do some drawing here. Anything that's dark. And I just throw it in. Also, I think much of drawing is learning to see. I think sometimes we go through, we look at things, but we don't really see them. And so drawing, because you have to now look at all those details and all those little things, it teaches you to see things. I think sometimes I take that for granted that I I've already developed that. I think that's one of the, the good things about drawing and not only can you express what's in your mind, but you learn to see things differently. Hopefully that's a good thing. The further you get away from the head, because your head is your, your emphasis area, the more sketchy you can be. And I often will drop down to this again using the side of my pencil. And I'll even put my finger on the tip so I can really draw dark. I can go in there and just because you can draw faster this way. Cover more space, more area. And sometimes it's all about speed. When you're, you're you know your model's gonna move on you, you know that buffalo is going to charge in, in just a moment and you've got to get as much information down before he gores you. Okay, bad example, but you get my point. Get it? Get my point. Wow. These are tough. Now, Native Americans, when they would hunt buffalo, they'd use every part of the buffalo, right down to the bones. They'd make tools out of them. The horns, you know, the horns are kind of hollow once you get rid of all the uh, membrane and stuff that's in there. You could put fluids in there. You could even melt it down. I mean, not melt it down. You heat it up and it gets soft and you can you can shape them. You can make cups out of them. Um, they used to they used to take them and split them, lay it out flat, and then they would cut out spoons and bowls and all sorts of things out of horn. And if you got a horn that's very light, you can heat it up and uh, make it flat and make it into like glass panes. People used to have those on their windows. And uh, the little horn would allow the light to come through, but uh, not the bugs. You've heard the term lantern. Lantern is a derivation of the word light horn. And uh, the panes under the lamp were done with horns. So they were called light horns. Do you know that? 
more incidental learning. It's all trivia. Like, that's never going to help you until you get on to wants to be a millionaire. Somebody told me once, gosh, Mr. Law, you're just scribbling. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm just scribbling. It's scribbling with purpose. Again, the further you get away from the head, the more you can scribble with purpose. I know, I know mine looks really scribbly, but it's amazing what's going to happen when you start to blend it with your cotton swab. And I can even take that cotton swab and draw with it. So like areas around his horn, I'm just going to go into that horn with my cotton swab. And look how fast that went. Not that that horn is completely done, but Look how fast that went. I can I can pick up more of that. There's his head. Your edges are the things you really worry about. So make sure they're soft and fuzzy. You can take your cotton swab and just take some of that fur and just give it a little fleck like that little feathered line there. Just do a little flick, 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 flick. Keep that edge nice and soft, fuzzy. No amount of line around that edge is going to make that edge soft and fuzzy like that. You just leave it alone. You just let it do its thing. Soft and fuzzy. Look how fast that went. Is this the best buffalo you've ever drawn? I know. It's the only buffalo you've ever drawn. So I have loaded a bunch of graphite on my cotton swab. I am now going to use that up in his, in his fur and just do these little flecky lines. Anywhere you want to put that, you're going to get a little soft, fuzzy edge. Here's his breath, so I'm using my cotton swab to just, and this works for like smoke. Everybody asks me, how do you draw smoke? Use your cotton swab. I'm doing the outside edge, leaving the light on the inside. That brings your little texture in the background as well. And that's all done with your cotton swab. Look how fast that went. So now I'm far away from the head. I can draw like crazy because I can just scribble this all in. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna do that. Scribble, scribble, scribble. His hair. I was at the Leonardo doing some life drawing a little while ago, and I was worried because I was like, oh, my wife was waiting for me, and I thought oh, I gotta draw fast. So I just, I went into Mr. Low fast mode 
and uh, these guys were standing around watching me. And when it was all done, they're like, wow, you draw so fast. Both guys said it, you're ultra fast. I was really worried though that my wife was waiting for me. I shouldn't have said that because I never told her that. Now she's gonna now she's gonna hear it. What? And the more graphite you put on there, the easier it is to manipulate it and smear it around. And so don't be shy about that graphite. Just throw it on there. One thing this does too is some of you get that kind of gray along your hand there because you put your hand on the surface and you're smearing it around. This way it gets it, your hand up off the surface and, and you don't have to deal with that. So if you have that gray hand syndrome, That's a good way of drawing. The other thing that does is it sharpens your pencil. Now I've got a really sharp pencil. So see how sketchy that is? But once you go over it with your, your cotton swab and then a little bit more black in there and you got it. I will never forget my wife sitting in that little cart. This buffalo comes up to her and starts snip her, her arm and m nuzzling her and you can just see the little cart that they're sitting in rocking back and forth that buffalo was so huge and uh, Katie said she she was afraid that if they got their horns underneath the bar they'd roll you over so she'd get out and Clap her hands at him. Get away, get away. Don't know if I'd do that. Next time you're at Yellowstone, don't get out of your car and clap your hands at a buffalo. They may not like it. So you can see what I'm doing here with this this cotton swab at the edges, edges where the fur is. You just kind of lay that out. Just give a little, let that kind of get soft. If there is grass or or weeds or anything, you can. Hey, that's us. I lost track of time. Sorry, folks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for doing this. Hope you have a lovely day. And remember, art makes life better.